welcome to my obligatory top 10 best movies of 2019 list. I watched a lot of movies that I really enjoyed. There was very little I disliked, which for me kind of says 2019 was an awesome year in film. Now, if something you love doesn't make my list, it doesn't mean I hate it, it just means I either didn't love it or I more likely didn't see it and probably have no plans to. Like most typical Oscar nom films are just not my go-tos, but enough of that. Time for the list. At number 10 is Avengement. This film sees a lowly criminal while on a prison furlough evade his guards and return to his old stomping ground to take revenge on the people who turned him into a cold-blooded killer. Jesse V. Johnson and Scott Adkins are truly the dynamic duo. For me, they're as synonymous as DiCaprio and Scorsese. I had an absolute blast with this film. I was engaged from start to finish and couldn't get enough. Our lead character is fantastic. Our lead actor is excellent. And the stunts and fight scenes are fantastically brutal. It's everything you could want. And to top it all off, it's accompanied by a wonderful composition by Sean Murray. I love Johnson. I love Adkins. And together, I was a delighted movie lover. I honestly can't recommend this film enough. Number nine is Wig. This is an HBO documentary that talks about the history behind Wigstock, the annual drag festival which glamorously signaled the end of summer for the gay community in New York City for almost 20 years. I never ended up doing a review on this because I find documentaries so hard to review. I could have if I tried, but I got lazy. Either way, it was brilliant. It gave us an in-depth look on where drag, real underground drag, originated from and what it was about and how it wasn't just expression but also kind of a protest statement and how it had such a cultural impact of the day. It looks at how much it has evolved but how so many people do wish that it hadn't evolved so much to the point where it's about commercialism. Older queens are happy to see this generation being able to make a living off this, but feel saddened that so many queens today don't know or understand or appreciate the origins of the art form they make money off. It also touched on how much the political climate impacted the LGBT community over the years, even talking about 9-11 and how people weren't just living in fear of terrorists and anyone of colour, but anyone who was different or stood out. And so the LGBT community started to lose a lot of their freedoms during this time. It was a fascinating look at the community, this huge event and all the significance behind it. An absolute must watch if this is a subject that interests you. Number eight is Isn't It Romantic? This film follows a woman who, after getting hit on the head, wakes up in a world where everything around her plays out like a romantic comedy film. I know this was hit or miss for a lot of people, but for me it was a hit. I could not love this movie more if I tried. I could never have predicted this, but I hadn't laughed so much in ages, and at the time of watching this, I hadn't enjoyed a film so much in ages, or, work, or walked away still quoting or recalling moments from the film like that in God knows how long. This is most definitely a film I would watch over and over again. It spoke to my soul and put me in stitches. Absolutely perfect, well thought out, written, shot and performed, just all around fantastic film. Number seven is Ride Like a Girl. This film is a story of Michelle Payne, the first female jockey to win the Melbourne Cup. I was intrigued by this film, but I had no idea I would love it as much as I did. It was emotional, powerful, uplifting and inspiring. Our cast did a terrific job of bringing these people and their stories to life and Griffiths has shown some incredible directing skills. It makes me very excited as a film lover at the prospect of seeing future directing work from her. I couldn't have imagined I would walk away loving a film about horse racing as much as I did, but I did and I highly recommend anyone and everyone to to see this film. Film number six is Extracurricular Activities. In this film, a mature, intelligent high school student has a side job arranging accidental deaths of fellow students' parents. A cop detective notices this student is connected to all the kids of dead parents, but who wins the face off? All in all, I loved this film. It was unique and it stands out from other films of the genre, especially in this day and age. It had me interested from start to finish and I felt that the style in which the film was shot, which for other films might feel low quality or low budget, I think worked perfectly for this film. It almost gave it this Pleasantville tone at times, which juxtaposed with people being killed in every scene, somehow made it more entertaining. I was unable to find any faults in this film. I loved everything about it. 
Film number five is Frozen 2. Set three years after the events of the first film, the story follows Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf and Sven who embark on a journey beyond their kingdom of Arendelle in order to discover the origin of Elsa's magical powers and save their kingdom after a mysterious voice calls out to Elsa. I love Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is a superior film in every way, shape and form and I was not expecting that. All our main characters are back and there is an undeniable evolution and growth to each and every character as we watch them go on this exciting journey full of mystery, intrigue and discovery. Even new characters we meet along the way have a depth to them and in turn are able to give more to the overall story. Now there were elements in the plot and mythology that were very poorly done and did not do a good job at linking with the first film but it didn't stop me from loving the film. This time around, even the soundtrack was far superior to the first film, just an all around awesome time. Number 4 is John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. It is the third installment in the John Wick film series and sees super assassin John Wick on the run after killing a member of the International Assassins Guild. And with a $14 million price tag on his head, he's the target of hitmen and women everywhere. Everything about this film was on point. Majority of our characters, even side slash new characters, have layers to them and we understand straight away their connection to John. Everything has its place and nothing feels overused or underused. It's like the three bears, this was just right. John Wick was an intense ride that for me is now the second film in recent years to create an electric atmosphere amongst its audience. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum was truly a spectacle and I mean that in the best way. Number 3 is Knives Out. The film follows a family gathering gone awry after the family patriarch's death leads a master detective to investigate. This film blew me up. Way. I was ready to dismiss it for a brief time, but it proved me wrong and then some. Incredible story, superbly written and performed by a tremendous cast playing a fascinating set of characters. If you love mysteries and you love many of the classics, then you'll love Knives Out. If you didn't bother with it thinking it had nothing new to offer, then I can't stress enough how much you need to give this a try. Knives Out was an incredibly enjoyable film and I want more. Number two is Rocket Man. The film is based on the life of musician Elton John and follows his early days as a prodigy at the Royal Academy of Music to his musical partnership with Bernie Taupin. Rocket Man is probably one of the best biopics I've ever seen, though admittedly I have not seen that many, but on what I've seen, this tops them all. Rocket Man is a musical film extravaganza that keeps your toes tapping thanks to the many songs from Elton's career performed by the beautiful vocal stylings of actor Taron Egerton. It keeps you enthralled with its vibrant psychedelic visuals and pulls at the heartstrings by telling viewers the painful story and history of music legend Elton John. I loved every single aspect of this film and not one of those aspects wasn't nailed to the fullest. There was indeed nothing to dislike in this film. An incredible Incredible script, brilliant performances, stunning cinematography and direction with a soundtrack that celebrates the music of Elton John. Even the costumes were sheer perfection, from the way they showed us the evolution of fashion throughout not just Elton's career but each decade around the world was just so right. The work that went into replicating so many of Elton's iconic costumes was terrific and only further demonstrates that this film is without a doubt a celebration and honouring of Elton's life, including his struggles because without them he wouldn't be who he is today. Rocket Man is a show-stopping film of epic proportions. And at number one is Avengers Endgame, the 22nd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that sees the surviving members of the Avengers and their allies work to reverse the damage caused by Thanos in Infinity War. Nothing like this has ever been done and I don't know if it ever will be again. I, I don't know how the MCU will be able to top itself. Watching movies is easy. We don't get that invested in their characters because we know after an hour or so that will be it. Watching a TV series and seeing it come to an end is an emotional experience because you've gone on this long journey for years becoming attached to these characters, invested in these characters, and as they have grown, so have we. So when you have to say goodbye, it feels a great deal like a loss, at least for me. That's precisely how this film feels. We as fans and viewers have been on this 11 year journey to and for it to finally be over is a hard pill to swallow. 
No film has ever put such a large number of acting talent on the screen at one time. The enormity is felt in every moment of this film, but especially during what I can only describe as the most epic monumental battle in cinema history. The time, the energy, the number of people who work tirelessly to create this unique cinematic experience, it just reminds you what an enormous collaboration this movie and all the others are. This isn't a one person job, this is what it looks like when hundreds if not thousands of people work together on a singular goal. And now you know my top 10 best movies of 2019. Lots of different types of movies appear on this list which is one of my favourite things about movies in general. 2019 was a great year for film and I hope 2020 is just as good if not better. That's it for today's video, please comment below and share your top 10 best movies of 2019. Thank you as always to my awesome patrons, I will catch you guys in the next video, so until then, bye guys.